Uh, Dr. Uh, Imperali, please explain the difference in intentional modifications of pathogens created using genetic engineering and serial passaging, which gets to your gain of function part of your testimony just now. Yes, yeah, so, um, so deliberate engineering requires some sort of forethought and knowledge as to what types of changes need to be made to achieve whatever the goal of that experiment might be. Right? So it's, it's really kind of an, a, a deliberate attempt to, to modify a, an organism, whereas a successive passaging, you're selecting for a phenotype right? or a behavior of that pathogen, and we don't know necessarily from the outset what that's going to be. You know, sometimes we're trying to achieve a, a specific goal, but, but the, the uh, results are always not what we anticipate. And so, but, and I liked your definition of gain of function. I think that's easy for people to understand. So both of these in certain circumstances, certainly genetic uh, engineering, but also serial passaging could be gain of function type research. Isn't that true? That, that's correct. But what I wanted to, to make the point is that not all gain of function research is going to make something more dangerous. Oh, absolutely. And, and that doesn't mean we shouldn't look at it. We just got to be careful with it. Do you know if uh, they were doing either of these intentional modifications at the Wuhan laboratory? I do not. I'm not that familiar with Fair the enough. work that was going on there. Do you know if they are doing, are doing, or were doing either of these intentional modifications on mon monkeypox at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases within the NIH? I also do not know that. Okay. Does anybody know the answer to those questions? It's fine if you don't. I'm just trying to get info. Sometimes you got to ask the question to find out. All right, uh, Dr. George. Here. Sure. Oh, yes. I, I don't know. I don't Dr. have a personal understanding of what happened uh, regarding the monkeypox research you talked about, but there is a, there's a public account of that in Science Magazine, which describes work combining different clades of monkeypox, characteristics of one clade, which is more, more virulent with one clade that's more transmissible. Thank you very much. You just gave a homework assignment to my staff. Find me the article. <laughs> they'll, they'll do that. Um, Dr. George. Based on the track record of the Chinese Communist Party's government, we really can't rely on them get, getting, we can't rely on them giving us early case data in a potential pandemic situation. Accordingly, should we allow any of our U.S. research dollars on potential pandemic pathogens to go to institutions that are predominantly controlled by the Chinese Communist Party? Well, I would say two things. First, uh, it's not just China that doesn't do a great job of reporting out. Uh, many countries don't for many, many various reasons. Secondly, I would say when it comes to issuing grants, whether they're federal grants or somebody else's grants, um, the government has the opportunity to put in a requirement in, in advance. It can be a requirement for anything. And, uh, they could put in a requirement to say in order to get Okay, so that leads me to another question that's down the list a little ways. We had that in our, in our dollars that were sent to, ultimately to, ended up in the uh, Wuhan uh, lab uh, through EcoHealth Alliance, and NIH didn't properly monitor it. So do we need, one, do we need additional teeth in addition to your recommendation that we have somebody who's the point person and a team to make sure that we have people taking a look at these things when we're dealing with dangerous pathogens. I think we need to make sure that we're emphasizing biosurveillance throughout the world and this is part of it. Yes, ma'am. And, and let me say, uh, I really appreciated your comment that it's not just the Chinese Communist Party that's, that's got issues. There were lots of organizations and that's why in my opening statement I said government I included the Chinese specifically, but I also referenced other governmental entities because we, this is a problem that we need to get straightened out worldwide, and I appreciate your testimony on that as well. Okay, according, uh, Dr. Howard, according to the GAO report, it was stated that we need more early samples from those with potential pandemic disease to be effective in determining pandemic origins. How do we better address this issue to ensure the foreign countries comply with what we were just talking about and giving us that data? As we mentioned in our report, we do recommend uh, and have proposed policy options that would encourage the development of multilateral agreements in advance of any pandemic that would encourage multinational sharing of samples and data. That would hopefully help address that issue. Do they, do they re respond to financial negatives if they don't? Is that something that works in that community? 
The experts we spoke with did mention to us that there are incentives that might be useful in some cases. I'm looking at negative incentives, but I appreciated my time's up and I yield back to myself.